I'm here with Dustin Kirkland, who's an Ubuntu server developer. Um, how are you enjoying UDS so far? It's a lot of fun. It's a very democratic process. I like that about it. Okay, so what are the sort of things you're looking at this week? Mostly encrypted home directories um, and the bits and pieces that go with that. Uh, we did quite a bit of work on encrypted private directories and Intrepid sort of proved the technology. We haven't had any reports of massive data loss or anything like that, which was certainly the, um, the part that made me nervous about it. And I think we're at a point where we can actually simplify the implementation such that instead of sort of carving off bits and pieces of what you want to protect into a private directory, mm. your whole home directory is, is protected. So uh, how would that work then in practical terms? In practical terms, the first thing to know is that it would actually be uh, conflict or be mutually exclusive with auto-login. Clearly, if you are choosing to auto-login, protecting your data is not something that's of paramount importance to you. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, if you are entering a pass password, passphrase to get into your data, um, I, basically, you shouldn't see or feel the effects of this. You enter your, your passphrase, that password is used to unwrap a second passphrase, which is a, a long string of 128 random bits mm. that's used to perform a mount on top of your home directory, at which point all of your, your data is, to you, transparently available as, as clear text data. It's going through a second layered file system in the kernel. The file system is called eCryptFS. Right. Um, and when it's actually written to disk, each file itself is encrypted. Um, another thing that, that we're working with upstream, the upstream Linux kernel uh, authors of eCryptFS, is file name encryption. We've got a lot of um, enhancement requests, feature requests, to ensure that those, the file names themselves are encrypted. So in, in, in Intrepid, all of the data, the contents, are in fact encrypted, but the, the file names are not. So right. for instance, someone might be able to see that you have a .ssh directory that has an ID uh, RSA private key. The, day, the content is actually encrypted, but at least someone sort of knows where to go looking mm. for for that data. And it becomes more of a problem if, if your file names give away something, if you have illicit yeah. content or yeah. whatever it is. That, you know. Yeah, this, this, this is my big passwords file list, dot text. Exactly. Even if it's encrypted, somebody will it's know a, it's target file. Right. Yeah. Um, now, the, the strength of the algorithm uh, should be strong enough. I mean, it's AES, it's uh, 128 bit. AES, the kernel vetted algorithms there. I don't have much of a problem with that. I think the bigger concern is that um, revealing that you have something uh, mm. just via the file name is, is a concern. So how does it work? Is it transparent to the applications? They just make all yeah. the normal system calls? Absolutely. And the that, file system and the kernel handle the encryption? That's, that's exactly right, yeah. Um, so l let me get to the... the the other part of this and the other part of what we need to do, mm -hmm. we need to encrypt swap space. Right, okay? okay. Because all the data on the disk, while it's encrypted, all the data that you're looking at is, in fact, decrypted, right, in memory. Mm -hmm. You have the, this virtual mount where your data you're reading and writing are from memory uh, because that's the way the kernel is going to pass things through, through to you. Sure. Um, imagine hibernating your, your computer at that point. You're basically taking all of memory, writing it to disk, now, in memory, this stuff is, is decrypted, it's clear, mm. right? Now we write it to disk, and all of a sudden you've, you know, written, your, written all your private data to disk in, in clear text, and someone can run something as simple as strings on your, your swap file and have access to your data. Uh, encrypting swap is the solution to that, such that what gets written to disk is, in fact, encrypted. There's a couple of problems with that, and that's what we need to solve in Jaunty. Resuming from Hibernate, then, is going to involve entering a passphrase on crack open the laptop and, and mm. um, I should note that suspend is actually not a problem that it works just fine it, your RAM is still powered up at that point in a low power state so suspend not a problem hibernate something we need to fix so are these likely to be default options for jaunty the plan right now is uh, on the page in the installer where you choose your your username your password um, another checkbox at the bottom of that and intrepid in the graphical installer, we added a uh, auto log in this user. There'll be a sort of a radio mm -hmm. or some. We need to work with our UI guys to find the best way to do that. But it will be automatically log this user in, or encrypt the home directory, or neither of, of the two. Um, on the server side, there'll be a, a box that comes up after you choose your username and your password. Do you want to encrypt your home directory? Yes. It'll be bootstrapped at that point, 
um, after the, the system's installed, adding subsequent users will have both the, 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 the command line tools are already done. We need to patch the user space uh, graphical utilities to have a checkbox on the on the tab when creating a new user, encrypt this user's home directory. So will users have to have a separate home direct a home partition, sorry, uh, in order to be able to use this? So the way that implementation works it's is actually where it gets slightly complicated. <laughs> um, when you're not logged in, all your data will be encrypted in home slash username mm. slash dot private. The dot sort of Hides it from immediate view. Right. Uh, keeps it keeps the RM RF from finding it in, in most circumstances. Um, your home directory, when it's not mounted, will also be permission five zero zero. So you don't have write access. It's meant to sort of prevent you from accidentally writing clear text data to your home directory when you really intend on writing encrypted data. Right. Um, in that in that directory, there will be unmounted home directory. There will be three sim links. A symbolic link to a readme.txt that explains this isn't mounted and why we're protecting your confidentiality. Obviously, some process or your last login unmounted. Here's how you remount it. There'll also be uh, a .desktop file which provides a clicky way of hey, I want to reestablish this mount. Throw up a dialog. Uh, enter your, your mount passphrase to or your login passphrase to unwrap the mount passphrase. Redo the mount. Um, and then there's also a symbolic link for your .ecryptfs directory, which is the metadata we need to actually perform the mount. Mm -hmm. That's going to live not in home slash username, but in var lib ecryptfs username. Um, it's got to be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is we need access to that data on both mounting and unmounting in both situations. Right. The, the tools right now have always expected it to live in, 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 in your home directory, which is the reason for the symbol. So when you log in, Pam takes your login passphrase, it uh, goes and looks for your .ecryptfs slash wrapped passphrase file, it uses your login passphrase to unwrap that, obtain that mount passphrase key. It uh, uses a kernel utility uh, to insert this into your kernel key ring. So it lives in, in sort of your, your, your kernel space uh, key ring. Um, the mount is performed at that point, which will mount home username dot, uh, dot private on top of home username. That mount point is now permed 700, or we could actually maybe make it 755. Uh, there's, that's another discussion, but it's permed 700. Mm. The point is that if you're taking the, the precaution of encrypting your home directory, the thought is you only want to be the one to see it, whether it's, it's mounted or, or unmounted. Um, so that lives there at that point. Inside of there is also a a symlink, a dot ecryptfs symlink back to the var lib, such that on unmount, the last user out, the or actually every time you go through the PAM stack on unmount, um, we're going to check a counter to see if that counter is, is back to zero. Uh, we decrement and increment each time you perform, you know, so that you can log in ten times and you have to log out ten times before it unmounts. Last one out turns right. out the lights, basically. Okay. Um, we need to obtain your signature to make sure that you have the right to unmount that mount your home directory, and if you do, boom, it gets unmounted at that point. And is there sufficient separation to allow multiple users mm -hmm. to have essentially different encryption? Yeah, so that's the beauty of using it. There's a lot of different file system encryption options or, or technologies out there. Um, the key point with this one is, uh, uh, there's a couple of key points. First of all, because each individual file is encrypted, you can perform incremental backups. If you have an LVM or block device encryption, you've got this, this big uh, two, four, six, or whatever gig file that you can't really incrementally back that up to untrusted offsite storage. Um, the second piece is that with, with those block device encryption mechanisms, you have to specify the size that you want to, you have to allocate space to that ahead of time. With this sort of layered uh, file system, you have as much space as you have on the underlying device. So you're not really putting user limits on how much they can put in their home directory. Mm. It's just, you know, you can use other tools to do that. But if you've got a 100 gig file system and you want 100 gigs of encrypted data, that's all, all at your disposal. Is there a performance hit with the encryption decryption on the fly? So we actually got some results back from Foronix, um, who've done a bit of performance testing on, mm. on Ubuntu and Fedora and other distributions recently. We were actually, uh, hadn't really had the time or uh, expertise to do that testing, and we're pretty pleased with 
the performance results we got back. I've been doing my development and uh, compilations inside of Encrypted Home Directory with virtually no noticeable, you know, that sort of like feely, touchy-feely performance mm -hmm. hit. What we saw in practice was about a 1% performance hit on compilations, um, audio, video, image encoding, decoding. Um, where we saw the bigger hits were on double encryption, so encrypting a large file that's sitting in, inside of an encrypted directory, compressing a large file that's sitting in an encrypted directory. The, the point there is that um, encrypted data doesn't compress very well, something like GPG does uh, a compression on it. Um, and the, the, the double write actually also hurt a fair amount too. We're working with the kernel team on a couple of optimizations we may be able to do uh, with, with that. Um, the idea is that this would be transparent enough that you shouldn't feel performance uh, a performance hit.